Welcome back. <laughs> We've got audio this time from the get go on this wonderful. It, oh, he didn't turn he's mine do on. Sign language. Uh, it sounds like it's raining, so you know. Come on. But we're we're here. The devil could not take us out before we got here, and he's not going to take us out when we leave. I'll speak that in Jesus' name. Enjoy the drive after me. <laughs> Enjoy the drive. Enjoy the drive. Well, if you're driving, pull over. Uh, and then drop your favorite quote in the comments and let us know where you're watching from while we get going. Uh, just real quick, whoops, that's the wrong screen. Right up front, um, our new thing, you said you wanted to dig in on it, and that's right at the top of Come the list. On. The new Family Care Group. Family Care. If you were here Sunday, you heard us announce it. We're rolling it out. We're trying to let everybody become aware of it. To me, it's one of the greatest things that we can be doing right now. Uh, a couple of our members that have been praying about something for a year, both of them retired gentlemen, very secure, very stable. They said, no, Pastor, whenever we have anybody in the hospital or a nursing home or a shut-in or anybody who's having any kind of a problems, we want to provide a ministry to them to help. We will do light pickups and drop-offs. We will uh, help with light uh, cutting their grass from time to time if that's what they need. We just want to be um, an asset to the body. And so we call it family care. I think it's great. Taking care of the family. So if you are one of those people that loves to help, uh, make sure you get in touch with us. Get in touch with us here at, when you come to church at the Information Center. We'll tell you all about it. It's on all of our information. It's on our websites. I think it's one of the greatest things that we've launched in a while, it incl including in all of the other ministries that we do, Pantry, Acts 29, Dining with Dignity, Act 4S, all of those things. Family care is going to be fantastic. Yeah, I, I love it. And it's coming at a phenomenal time. Uh, yes. You know, great on the guys for stepping up and, uh, you know, doing what um, we're Thank all you. called to do. Because obviously we can't do everything physically. I know right. everybody somehow, well, not everybody, but people believe that pastors just have the uh, we, superpower we're not to supposed be to. everywhere. We're supposed and to do equip everything. the saints for the work of the ministry. Well, there you go. Speak and so that that's loud biblical. for the people in the back. And so while we're doing that, this church, I'm telling you, y'all, I don't know if people are hearing me, but I'm saying <laughs> that this church has never been more biblical. Um, it, because we're, we're living out the Matthew 25 mandates, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick and in prison, all those kind of things. We are boots on the ground. We're getting the work done. We have never been more biblical than we are right now. Hence, the spiritual warfare. Fight. It is, it is, it is. Wonderful. So annoying. Let's go. Have you prayed so about annoying. it? So <laughs> annoying. Uh, but yeah, the, the um, family care group that we just spoke about, on our website, the volunteer sign up. You can go there under the events. The Voyager Kids Back to Woo! School Bash. This is the Let's good go. one. I don't know who else is doing other back to school bashes back in to town. Back to school. But I bet ours will be the best. Uh, August 10th. Oh, that's this week. Um, from 4 p.m. to something. I can't see it on my screen. This Sunday, we have the blood drive going on. And the Grief Share group is starting up this Sunday. Sunday night. Um, what's that? Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yeah, that's going to be a really big thing. Um, if you really haven't thing. signed Justin's in for that, groups in if Facebook. you haven't heard about that, go to the website, dig in on that. Uh, they have their own private area on the app. Yep. That they communicate back and forth with one another. Everything's going to be done on a Zoom call. So you can literally, from Alaska, you can tune in on this. Um, people don't process grief very well. And uh, this young lady, Kelly, is going to step up and give a Zoom call and give her time because she herself has had a, a great deal of trauma in her life. She's going to use that. Every weapon that the enemy uses against you, you can use in the future. Ooh, it's exciting. There's a sermon out of that. Hey Amen. Let yeah. us know where you're watching from while he's doing the announcements. Let us know where you're watching from. Things are coming Mom's up, watching. man. A lot of stuff is going on. Youth there night. is. Sunday we'll have uh, an announcement as well on uh, the, the upcoming youth stuff, but yep. the youth is kicking off on the 18th. I had a new family ask me last Sunday. Yeah. What is, does this oh. church have a youth group? I said, and yes, sir. I forgot his name, but I do want to say it. We had the young gentleman Sunday who's been coming. It was his third time coming, uh, and he gave his life to Tristan. Jesus, finally got saved. Yep. So that was awesome. Um, Salvation. I got a chance to talk Lord. to him, and we got him a Bible. And Come on. That's, that's literally what, what it's all that's about. That's what it's about right there. I was That was... That was happy for me. And it last, was a good Sunday. Tacos and tacos testimonies. And testimony. Men, August the 24th, Saturday night from 5 until 7. Uh, if you were here for Beast Feast, you know you don't want to miss this. 
we're going to really set up the table and spread the, the thing out. It's going to be awesome. Trust me, we don't do anything little around here. It's going to be great. Uh, also, the thing that I wanted to roll out two weeks in advance is a book share for that night. I haven't even told you about this. A uh, book share for that night. I, I really believe that readers are leaders and leaders are readers. And I believe we've recommended books in the past. You recommend a lot of books. I do. I love books. I know you've, you've got a lot of them, <laughs> but like a book that you've read that is amazing that you want to share um, and you don't mind, bring it there. We're going to have a table set up, set the book on the table, and guys are just going to be allowed to browse and pick up, and if they'll take it, they'll take it and read it and bring it back the next month. Book share. I think it's an important part Somebody's of gonna that Somebody's going to come in men. with like Jack Reacher or something. No, bring <laughs> something that is building your spiritual walk with God. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Because <laughs> somebody will hey, be bringing you gotta, it. You have to specify. <laughs> Or people Somebody will will bring bring it hey, Reggie, my buddy up in the Bronx, knows. I hope y'all are okay. I saw. Let me know if you are. I saw some of the weather. Uh, I know you and I are friends at Ocean Isle. Uh, Ocean Isle got some rain and some wind, but not much flooding. But I saw that the Bronx had some things going on up there. Let me know how you guys are doing. Good work at the Prodigal Center. Y'all are killing it. Well, I don't know how you go away from that. I'm digging that, this, so. man. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Glad to have yeah. you with us. Uh, no, so Sunday... Uh, be where you're supposed to be. Second, That's it. What? That exploded in me. You could tell. That exploded in me. While I, you were up here before. Before. I, I knew that that was a word uh, from God for this house at this moment. So many people needed to hear that. If you haven't heard it, seen it, go watch. It's on YouTube and all of our stuff. Out of 2 Samuel chapter 11, when the time for war was... I remember when I was a kid in Sunday school hearing that story. When it was time for the kings to go out to war, David didn't go. He stayed home, and, and that's when he fell into his sin with Bathsheba. And it just burns in my heart that message to be where you're supposed to be. Nothing good comes from idle hands. Isn't that, there's right? a saying like that, something like that, something from idle hands, something like that. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. There you go. Mine was <laughs> the modernized version. It's a fact. And so but yeah. that was what I built on. It was, it was uh, it was really good, and until you called me up at the end, that was that was terrible. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, like, no. Let me dig on that for just two seconds. Come on, Brittany, come on down for tacos. We'll make you sing on Sunday. But the thing that you said at the end, I called you up for a very specific reason, because you and I had had some private conversations. Listen, people don't think that he and I have private conversations. We have a this is lot. The only time we talk. <laughs> Sunday mornings, we don't talk at all. We have a lot <laughs> of private conversations. So uh, when we he and I talk, we talk about things that are important. And, and you said something to me last week that was so important about the future and moving forward and you and I working together and that God said, you know, we have both uh, together and we'll do this. It was it was a blessing to my heart and it blessed a lot of people. It was a, it was a, a really, obviously, eye-opening moment, but... I don't know. There's God's doing a lot in me the last uh, couple days, um, and it's. I mean, it's awesome. But yeah, that it was just like whoa, because I don't know. You know, there's the pressure of everything, and then I was just like, man, you know, he was he was like, why not both? Like, you know, you can reach different people yes. than I can reach, and just two. That's immediately. I didn't think about it kind of until I got up here. The whole Elisha and Elijah connection, but just having. Yeah. That those two voices, uh, there's was, so much that can be done. I think it was helpful too, and it set, it calmed a lot of fears because I, for some reason, we've been in this discussion now for over a year. You came to me two years ago, but we've been in a legitimate discussion for over a year about our future and your future and moving into leading here. And I think people have this assumption that that Kathy and I are just going to disappear. And you know, that is, guys, that's not the case at all. We've got work to do. Kathy's got work to do. She loves working in Voyager Kids. I've got work to do with the men, obviously. I love doing that. I love to preach. I love to sing. And I've said we're going to be here for the next 20 years to do whatever we can to help them. But, man, I think it blessed a lot of, a lot of people. No, it blessed me. So. It, was, it was good. We're in a, we're in a uh, I think the season is about to change. I think you're right. I had anybody got a witness on that online? I'm telling you, there was ah, what day was it? Sunday or Monday? And this is completely off. We're still off on the rabbit hole. But Sunday or Monday, I was outside and I was watching the the just the storm come in, and we were doing stuff with the horses. She was feeding the horses or whatever. I don't know anything about the horses. I just go up and you know slap them, and you're cute. 
That's about all I know. Uh, and getting thrown off that one time. <laughs> but I went up there and I was just talking to him and I was like, man, just, I don't know, I was just having a moment with the horses, looking at them, and I was like, this is cool. And then I was like, got to thinking, I was like, these, these animals have been around forever. And then I was like, I can't imagine, because we've only got the three and there's like the barn and I was just, all the smells, and I was like, I can't imagine how it smelled in the Bible times when they had hundreds of these <laughs> Thousands, around and yeah. just all of that and all of the logistics that that comes in with that with feeding them and all that and I just had this whole moment I it was just and I've said it before you know the Bible isn't just what happened it's what it's what's always happened yep. and we see history repeat itself and it's playing itself out again and I was just watching the storm come in and God just hit me and it was just like we're just we're just living it all over again and I was what I was like man the the the, the storm coming in and how, you know, now we have the radar and all that. Well, they didn't have that back then. They mm -hmm. had they had the, the prophets that were telling them, you know, this peril is coming. And then I was thinking, you know, the connection just, they're watching the skies mm -hmm. and seeing storms come in. And there's just, I don't know, everything clicked. And it was just the storms that we've all been facing, you know, that the mm -hmm. church has been facing, that our family has been facing, that my family has been facing, that the people that are coming here has been facing. I just got this revelation that as this storm is coming now, and it will pass, as I said it in the other sermon, that they all come to pass. I, there's something speaking to me that Amen. it's about to finally shift. It's about to finally change. The weather's about to clear up. The storm's about to, I just think there's about to be some big turnaround in a lot of people's lives. Um, I'm going to put my notes aside, and we can talk about that later. Uh, because I love prophetic words. I love prophetic moments. I, I, I live for that. I, my whole life in the Pentecostal church, I've lived for prophetic moments. That is a prophetic moment. Anybody who's watching this, if it witnesses with you, tell us. But that moment of saying the seasons are changing. I've watched this for a while. And you talk about storms and the people that, that you and I are in relationship with that are just experiencing one storm after another of, of health or finances or family or all that is going on. It's like... It, it, it's like indignation is being poured out. Right? People unjustly being attacked and, and their reputations are being smeared. Things are being said and done about them. And, and I think a lot of people in that time have just given up hope. They just start withering under the assault. And that's the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, that's what he does so that you wither under the assault. But if you will find your faith and stand firm in that and believe and just confess it, I want, to, I want to accept that as a word for my life. They're, the seasons are changing, and it, they're changing in a good way for the right reasons, not because we're in desperation, but we're, they're changing because God is at work and God is changing something in that future. Uh, I've seen a lot of people in their just division. They're letting division drive them apart from one another. People these days are so easily separated from one another. Relationships that have, friendships that have existed for years, they just are letting them things dissolve it's terrible because, you know, we need to be in unity. and People need to be walking and working together in the faith. And I love that. So thank you for bringing I it mean, up. I mean, you look. Prophetic word. You, you, you look and it's, there's just the times that we live in. There's all of the confusion swirling around about literally everything. Uh, the, the chaos the economy, whatever it is, and now, like, and I and I heard uh, Ferdick say it the other day, he was like, now is, like, the weirdest time to be doing this because right. of all the AI. He's like, now they can put something right. that, that looks, you know, like, you can, they can make a video with our voice it and our face, and it looks like, like what we said, mm -hmm. and we never even said it. Or they'll slice up what you said to make you say something you didn't say. So it's a weird time to be yes. doing this, mm -hmm. and it's just... It's so weird. It's just there's all this just stuff going on, everything that you could Amen. focus on, and it's just everybody's attention is being robbed in different directions, and, you know, you've got nothing wrong with, you know, TV or whatever, but it's like Netflix and Hulu and Prime, and then you got your phone and all the different social media apps, right. and then you've got this and the news and this 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 bank account and that bank account and everything. you got everything to focus on, and then it's just like... One little thing is all it takes to set people off. So that's just like yeah. that. Like people are just looking for stuff right. as an outlet, and it's just causing division everywhere, especially within the body. I mean, the world is whatever. It's always going to be a mess, and we're be. trying to reach it. But it's like the division in the body yeah. everywhere. It's just like what is what is going on? But Come it's on. I don't know. There's the there's been so much opposition yep. uh, with the opportunity that's placed before us with the land and the church, and just really go. I mean, you think as soon as we started immediately going after it 
everything starts coming against you. Can we can we be honest? I mean, the the, the minute we started going after it, believe it or not, people started leaving. People started leaving our church. You're like people that have been here for decades. You're like, really? And you you kind of step back and you start to question. Oh wow, are we then, did we are we missing something here? And God is at work, and I'll say it straight to the cameras. God is at work, and I hope He's you're feeling that in your life, and it's a witness to you. And even if you're dealing with all that kind of stuff that we're talking about spontaneously right now, yeah. God is at work. Don't back away from it. Just stay your focus. Trust God. Don't ever stop trusting God. God's going to work it out for your good. I, I, I'm just going to stand on There was a little bit of time. There was a little bit of time <laughs> when, I, when I openly said many times here in this church, I'm almost glad that my time is over because this world has just gone crazy. <laughs> Woof. This world has just gone completely crazy. Yeah. And 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 then I was like, well, I'm glad my time's up. And, you know, you young bucks, you strong guys can take it and run with it in the future. But then I got stirred up about it and I got mad about it. Um, because that's just not right. And 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 the wisdom of the ages needs to come back and then the strength of working together to make something. How dare the enemy think that he can do that? And he can uh, yeah. press people like that. Well, because he's gotten away with it before. Yeah, how you look all in the Bible and, you know, uh, just all the times the people, it's, it's, I always used to, you know, you read it and it's so much easier to judge the Israelites and all the people in the Bible. <laughs> You're like, oh, you, you literally watched God <laughs> split the sea and you walked through. And then as soon as you get to the other side, well, you lost your faith and now you're too worried to go into the right. promised land. And then, oh, you, God set you up and blessed you and did all this. And now you're already immediately worshiping false idols and, and the <laughs> nation's falling apart. And then you go into exile and then you come back and then you do this and then you come back. And it's like, but we have literally done it, it nonstop for all of eternity. And, and I don't want to go, whatever. We're literally just walking it out the same but, way. And, and oh, there was something you said a minute ago about, oh, people almost giving up and, there was a short that popped up on my phone that I sent someone that they needed. Well, we both needed it. But I sent it to them. I sent it to Kelsey. It was Kelsey. I don't know why I was, like, being cryptic about it. But I sent it to Kelsey, and then, because it was really good. And then I was like, well, I want to watch the whole sermon. So I ended up watching the whole sermon. And I don't remember the name of it now, which is terrible. But at the end of it, he was talking. It was the story of... Uh, the, when the disciples went fishing after Jesus has already been resurrected mm -hmm. and he comes up to them um, on the shore and they don't recognize him and the God of already, that's what it is. If you want to go watch it, phenomenal sermon. Uh, and he comes up on the shore, they don't recognize him and you know he tells them, throw them on the other side. And they had already started rowing in. They were 100 yards away from the shore. And I don't want to spoil it, so hold your ears if you don't want to hear the big spoiler. Jesus won. Well, no, he, it was... <laughs> There's so many good points about God, you know, already being there and already doing it. But the the big point that got me was how close we are to, like you said, how close people get to giving up. And yes. they were only they were already coming in, and they're only a hundred yards from shore. But Jesus says, "Throw the nets on the other side." Mm -hmm. So now it's more work for them to give up than to actually get blessed to give what He had told them to do. Come on, so. On the boat, it's only eight feet, so you could be only eight feet away from stepping into your blessing or 100 yards from having to work towards giving. It was so good. It was so good. You going to write it down? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give him an offer. <laughs> I'm going to have to give him it an offer tonight. It was good, man. It was it's good. It's still good. There, there's but, a there's spirit of something stirring around in here tonight. J Amy, you're right. Keep Jesus at the center of it. Donna, we're glad to have you there. Hope your heart, he you're healing well in the hospital. I'm just excited about it because it's you don't live on excitement. No. But there is a time in your life when you can feel the seasons changing. You can feel that wind shifting and going in another direction and God doing something and God is at work. And I'm just going to stand flat-footed on it and say God is at work. Um, I got some great news today that I'm not telling anybody about until I'm ready. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I don't think your mother even knows yet. So Whoa. I'm just hanging on to it for a minute. Well, there you go. So God is at work. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Uh, but be where you're supposed to be. <laughs> We've almost <laughs> completely forgotten about this sermon. <laughs> hey, that's fine. It's the family room. They come for the extra. And this and, is the and extra. And you guys that are there, talk amongst yourselves. Share some thoughts and whatever you're feeling. Uh, and you know what? Uh, we've got a lot of great people coming to this church right now. 
Uh, I just wanted to brag a little bit on some of the people that I wouldn't, I would never mention them by name, but some of you are in the room right now. The work you do, the love that you have, the compassion that you give, the service that you, the sacrifices that you make, it's a powerful thing. Cynthia, oh, I said I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> so good. Uh, that's Subtle. not her real name. It's that a suit it as smooth as when you call the music team up for altar call. Come on, I'm done. Y'all come up here. I'm like, can we get like, find a better way to do point. that? We're getting ready to start something, <laughs> uh, um, a, a, a wellness ministry, and I'm tickled about that. Uh, hey, I am. This was. Ah, oh, man, that just reminded me the, when Kelsey and I brought up the whole fam groups things in the small groups, mm -hmm. and now it's finally. Finally. Coming it into year. what that is needing to be, and I'm stoked about it. I mean, you got the grief share, the family care, the one that you just said that I already Fan forgot group. the name. The yeah, just men's all group. of the different the men's group, like all of the small groups. That is what I have been because eventually it's happening. It's the church is too big to feel small, but that's the point of the small yes. groups and the you know being able to get in community. I'm I'm just excited about that. Amen. Um, and that just goes to show you, uh, nothing is ever random. And that's one of the All the points way back I wrote to down. That little 10th grade moment that I had when principal, Vice Principal Bishop yelled down the hall, and somebody actually commented on it later on Facebook, uh, Cochran, where are you supposed to be? You better get there before something bad <laughs> happens. Um, the revealed and common consequence of improper positioning, not being where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. If you find yourself out of place and where you're not supposed to be, um, I talked a lot about the timing of God. Um, and, and one of the men of the church, Robert Mickey, hit me later, and we had a long discussion about it in private, uh, the time and the timing of God, how important that is, because sometimes we can start to feel like life is just meaningless and random, and one day blops into the next and the next, and it means nothing. But God is always at work in those days and moments in ways that you don't even see, attaching things in way, connecting things in ways that you don't see until all of a sudden it comes together and you are right where you need to be. Timing. Timing is, there's actually a really good T.D. Jakes sermon on that. Timing is everything. And he talks in there about how... Um, <laughs> Mom. She, <laughs> I know. I she found, found out, out before first. you. <laughs> um, oh, what was it? He was talking in there about like eternity and the oxymoron of like eternity past and eternity future. We, God is in eternity. That is something that we can't grasp around, but we have to put the human terms on it with eternity past and eternity future. And he made this big thing, but he talks about how, you know, when he was a younger man, when he was in his 30s and he wanted to say something to somebody, he would have, he would have thought about it a little more and might have, you know, he's like, if I had eternity to think about it, I probably wouldn't end up saying it because I'm going to run through every scenario. But he's like, now that my time is running out, I don't have much time Ooh. left. I'll let you have it. I'm gonna let I'm gonna I'm gonna let it fly. I'm gonna Amen. say it when I need to say it because I don't have much time left. And it's just timing. Timing is so critical. Everything. I broke it down to two kinds of predominant times that we find. There's more in the Bible, but Chronos and Kairos. Uh, Chronos is the clock, tick tock, tick tock, 24/7, 365. Chronos is punching in at the clock, going to work, taking the time, finishing at five o'clock. Blah 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 blah. Kairos is an entirely different thing. It's the, it's the timing of God, the unique perspective for the purpose of God to happen. And when it is meant to happen, it is going to happen. Not a moment before and not a moment after. And if you've ever been in that moment and in the, the intentional positioning and timing of God when it happens, there's a feeling that you can't even describe to people. But what the gist of the sermon was, was that do you need to be where you need to be when you're supposed to be there? And based on the time and the timing of God, that God has a time and a place for you. And if you're not living your life in submission, if you're not living your life in obedience, I will, I will die loving that phrase that you, you said. Um, I would, when God spoke to you about going into ministry, I was not going to tell God no. I refuse I said, I refuse to tell God no. I refuse to tell God no. You ought to get a shirt. That's powerful. I refuse I mean, what to is... tell God no. <laughs> we could say that about everything. Yeah. Serving, I mean, giving, forgiving, being merciful. Get you, you saying yes to God and whatever he is asking you to do brings nothing but blessing into your life. I mean, you're, you're giving him glory. You're worshiping him by trusting in him. You're putting your faith in him. I mean, that's it's just so much more than just not saying no. There's so much yeah. involved in that. I respect that so much. And it really spoke volumes to me. 
Uh, because I, I would like to think that I've spent a lot of my life saying yes to God. But, uh, you know, I think it sparked a little something in a lot of people. Maybe it'll spark something in you guys watching tonight. Uh, live your life in such a way that you just say, I refuse to tell God no. And what makes it easier and saves a lot of headache and heartache and heartbreak is, uh, we'll say we refuse to tell God no, but we take a lot longer saying yes than we should. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. you'll fight it. I mean, like the clip I just posted on Facebook, yeah, yeah, that yeah. guy four that years. fought it for four years. I mean, I don't, I don't remember how long I was fighting the feeling. It wasn't four years because it came on quick. But it was just like you can only push back for so long before that, that weight gets so much that you're like, okay, well, either come on, it either gets lifted by me saying yes or it gets lifted by me saying no. And then I, who knows where you who end Who knows up. what's next? Yeah. I mean, Either way, you don't know what's next, but I would rather be on the yes side and in his hand and pursuing his plan and his will, amen, than yeah. my own. Shout out to Sheila Bateman. She says she's cancer-free, found Everybody. out today. That's awesome. Y'all ought to shout the in the rooms in the right chat, there. Because that is Sheila. awesome. Cancer-free, God bless your heart. I did, um, you said something, so I have it written down <laughs> under something that sparked a message in me, and I'm not going to go into well, that. Well, I want to hear it. That's no. what I was specifically going to ask you about it tonight. No. I in the family that room. Because that one will show up Sunday, and that one is... That one is... Because I turned around and said something to you, and you weren't even looking at me. You're no, just, I don't even know what you said. <laughs> I was just like... Tuck, 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 tuck. I don't care. I was, I was going. I felt... I always try to hide my phone when I'm writing the notes... Because I don't know if people think I'm, I'm on Facebook or right. something, or if something's going on and I'm Woo. texting Kelsey to see what you know some issue with the sound or live stream or whatever. But I was writing it down and it was just like, man, I didn't care. I was just come on. It was one of those. If you don't get it out now, you ain't gonna remember it. So I, I call had to that do the it. anointing. That's how I know that I'm listening to an anointed preacher when I get yeah. a sermon out of their sermon. It was. Kathy Murray's really dropping a lot good. of quotes. Thank you for dropping them, Kathy. Y'all ought to screenshot some of that. Things go right and things go wrong based entirely sometimes on the time and the timing of God. All right, I dug in on how do you're going to know. Uh, and I gave the simple something so simple that even a caveman could do it. I said three things, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and the people of God. If you find somebody who is into the Word like they are supposed to be, uh, then you will find somebody who is able to discern right from wrong, good from evil. He will use that, the word that he has put inside of you to recognize the right path, the right people, the right places. The Spirit of God, he will lead you by the Spirit of God. I dug in on the people of God. And, and boy, I love that when that happens because you can see it in people's faces. And then they commented later in that same sermon on Facebook about the right people in your life. Oh, yeah. That is Come who on. you are surrounded by is actually, that's a funny thing. Um, that I was just reading before here, um, the, the Daniel in the lion's den, and when all the false prophets, uh, you know, got proven wrong and found out, mm -hmm. not only did, uh, you don't get this in Sunday school, but because Kelsey, <laughs> Kelsey was sitting by me, and she was like, oh, because oh. not only do the false prophets get thrown in the pit with the lions, but their wives and their children get oh. thrown in. And just, you know, that's terrible, obviously, um, that was the custom of the day, uh, unfortunately, because wives and children, they didn't really have a place. They were just considered property. So, but the, that's what it stood out to me because it's, it's just a testament of when you're incorrect, un incorrectly leading your family and you're not a man of God and you're just, I'll just call, let's just say, oh, let's come up with a new term. We'll call it false fathers. Uh, we'll call what? False fathers. There's a sermon. Why not? False fathers. Uh, you're, you're living in the world. You're of the world. And you're not leading your family to God with God working through you. The, the things that you do by default trickles down to them. Like we say it in here yeah. all, all the time. What happens to the head flows to the body. And it was just, I read that and it's like, you know, on the one hand, you're like, that's awesome. You know, Daniel gets... Uh, avenged and the false prophets, you know, they're gone. But then it's like, man, their their family that had no idea what was maybe right. going on, they had no say in it just by the fact that Brutal. what the father and the leader of the house was doing trickled down and they were also held account accountable for it. And it's just, I read that, it's like, man, that is really depressing because we've yeah. got to, men, you've got to stand up, you've got yeah. to lead your family the right way, you've got to lead your family to God because... 
I mean, obviously they're not going to get thrown in a lion's pit, but if you're not leading uh, your family to God, you're either, in this life, you're either on the path to eternal salvation and eternal glory or eternal suffering and condemnation. I mean, that's the only two that's outcomes. Only? So it's not a lion's pit, but it's a much worse alternative. Amen. I pressed on that pretty hard. And I actually had a guy come up to me in the gym this week and thank me for it. Uh, it when it's time for you to be a parent, that's where you need to be. You need to be, if it's time for you to be a dad, you don't need to be out living out your high school fantasies and chasing skirts and flirting at the water cooler. You need to be a dad. Your children need you more than ever. That's your first priority in ministry. Time for you to be a mom. It's not time for you to be out having your next girl's night out and blah, blah, blah. You need to be a mom. Seasons change, and it's time for you now to step into that role. They need you now more than ever. Can I give a shout out to Brittany Hunter? Or Brittany oh, Baker. Wonderful. I'm sorry, Brittany. I still call well, you Hunter. <laughs> Brittany Baker <laughs> healed from a good. blood disorder a few weeks ago. I want to know that. more. See, God's moving. God is. See, God is at work. Good things are going on. This is powerful. I think this is the best family room we've ever had. It is. I'm We're excited about it. We're close to uh, um, the, year, the year thing, too. I can't remember when we started. There was something I was going to say. What were you just saying? I said, refresh my memory. Brittany's amazing. No, before that. <laughs> I'm amazing. Kathy Murray is amazing. Everybody's doing good. When it's time for you to be a dad, it's time to be a dad. Time to be a oh, mom. Time to be a mom. Yeah, conviction. Conviction. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's never fun, but it was it was just something Jake's had said. He was like, he's just he's like, it's gonna sting. Just take a couple deep breaths and we'll get through it together. Yeah. But conviction is good for the soul. We all need it. Well, preaching has changed, I think, and it's important for that uh, to to be brought up. Um, too much preaching in, in contemporary culture, church culture these days, sounds like pep talks and motivational speeches and all that kind of stuff. Preachers, I think, need to get back to the basics, preaching the word, staying in the word, but at the same time, taking themselves off of their elevated platforms and putting the shoes on and getting right down in there with everybody and being a part of that, um, being transparent, sharing your stories, telling your, your faults and your flaws, um, just being transparent and being real about it. People don't want to be preached at. Uh, nobody likes that. They they love to know, hey, we're in this together. Yeah. You know, my pastors are going through this with me. We're, we're fighting the same fights. It's easy to follow and it's easy to connect with people like that. So. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the... I mean, you think about it with, with anything. It's just... We're so... Uh, I don't know the word. We're just so... Um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but we're so used to seeing, desensitized, I guess. We're so used to seeing that with celebrities, and you see these people on a um, on on an elevated platform, like a celebrity or something, and you're like, oh, and, but, and we, you know, you only see certain aspects of them mm-hmm. and certain highlights of their life, and you don't, <laughs> you almost get in this thing that they're not like a real person, and then you see like videos of them on the street, and they're trying to hide from people just because of the recognition that they get. And it's like, these are still people. Like, your pastors are still people with problems. Like, we're all going through something. It's just, I mean, it's easy to look at someone else and you don't think that they're going anything through anything. I said it more than 20 years ago. Uh, I'm just a shepherd in sheep's clothing. I think that's important, being real. That's really you, you cool, wanna, Rochelle. Right? That's awesome. Rochelle, I, we just both caught that yeah. at the same time. Go ahead, dig in on that. No, that's awesome. Uh, for our YouTube audience, uh, Rochelle Heater, she says she's never been a Christian, nor does she truly know the word. But you two have uh, completely changed my thinking, and I now listen every Sunday and Wednesday to try to learn Amen. more. And that's, you know, that's that's all we're trying to do. Just Isn't that wonderful? Plant a seed Thank you. And yeah, so I'm, I'm glad that's Thank working. Thank you. That makes my whole day. And we I've had a good day. Going on here. Huh? We got everything going on here. It's Something you had day. said. So let me see if it refreshes your so memory. So you're still not going to tell us what sermon I'm not, because you're going to hear it Sunday. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you the line, but I'm not going where it is. You had just said, everywhere that you are, he is. And that's all I'm going to give. As soon as you said that, and I was like, all inside. I'm like, man, that was, that's what I was talking about Sunday when I was like, you missed the launching point which was like a weird way to say it, but you knew what I meant. I was just like, you said that, and in my head I was like, oh. Everywhere you, you are, could he just is. Go. But you had said something to um, to the effect of, if you something about if you don't go with the flow, there are consequences. Oh, yeah. That's how I wrote it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and I don't think that's exactly how you said it, but then I put my own thing on there. 
that popped up in my head was that if, if you're not going with the flow, you end up being a blockage Woo. to the other people that are trying to go with it. And then you end up putting a stop to uh, the moves of God that's going through your life. And it, even Woo. just uh, something, uh, think about it as something as simple as like the, the strength of God um, and, and your faith, you know, you're walking in the strength that he's giving you. And the minute you start to doubt it, boom, it's blocked. Mm-hmm. Not that he's blocking it from you, but you believe that you don't have it within your power that he is, the power that he has put in you. And so you start doubting yourself and you start speaking negatively over yourself and you start thinking that, you know, you're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to amount of anything. You start mm-hmm. blocking because of the power of the words coming out of your mouth. You know, if you're not going with the flow of where God wants you to go, you end up blocking so much Amen. on the very path that you should be walking. I think about this too, and this is just for the family room. I didn't do this Sunday, but I really I thought about it, but then I didn't bring it out. So here we are for the family room. Uh, that when you are walking with God and you're in the word and you are doing your part to follow and obey him, listen to this, as strange as it sounds, where you are is where you need to be. Uh, when you're trying to be led by the Spirit of God, when you want to, you just want to honor God. I just want to glorify God with my life and whatever it is that I'm doing. As strange as it might sound, and I'm sure legalists and purists may want to fight me about it, but that's okay. Where you are is where you need to be. Where God, that job that you don't like, that you hate, that it would just believe that you're going to honor God in that. You brought that up a few weeks ago in, in a sermon. Just believe that you're going to honor God in it and watch it's what God can do with it, and He will. Like you said, not, nothing is random. Right. Your, your steps are ordered. Uh, and yes, we have free will and all that, but nothing is random. And there's always, like like we've been saying, there's, there's, a, there's a time and a season for everything. And you are where you are going through what you're going through with the people around you for a reason. Yep. There's always a reason. There's always something. Um, oh, what did I hear earlier? It was, it was something like, oh... It was something about seasons and purpose. And I don't, I've listened to like four or five sermons today. Uh, and maybe it even wasn't one, but he was saying something about, you know, we're always, we're always looking for my purpose. I don't know my purpose yet. What's my purpose? God, show me my purpose. Tell me my purpose. Give me my purpose in this. What am I supposed to do? And he's like, quit, quit looking for your purpose. Come on. And look for your season. Because where you're Whoa. in is a season, you know, because I think it was Jake's. Yeah. Because he was talking, he's like, you know, you, you run across the people where you're going through something and they're just like, oh, you know, just trust God, just mm-hmm. just push through, it's all good. And he's like, you're, you're in the middle of spring, but I'm over here in winter. You're in a different season than I'm in. And you're speaking to me mm-hmm. from something that you don't know what I'm dealing with, how it feels. So he was like, whatever season you're in, look for that. That's your purpose. Mm-hmm. Don't go, oh God, what's my That's purpose? Look water. for the season that you're in because mm-hmm. wherever you're in right then, there's a purpose for that season. Man, you might be going through something crazy, but it could be to be a light and a blessing for someone else. Uh, you know, you could be in a season of abundance and your business is running great and you just got a promotion at work and you're making more money than you've ever made in your life. That's a great season to be in. Maybe you're supposed to use that to bless someone, to help someone out of uh, a financial situation that, you know, they're not having a good time with. Maybe you're supposed to help a church buy some land. Mm -hmm. But uh, (laughs) be a blessing. Be be a blessing. There's always, don't, you know, because you can get stuck just looking for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And all you're praying about is, well, what's my purpose? I don't know my purpose yet. Okay, well, what what's my life look like right now? What season am I in? What can I do with what I've got mm-hmm. where I'm at? Do you remember Donnie Williams, mm-hmm. the old preacher? One of his favorite phrases, he's gone on to be with the Lord now, but one of his favorite phrases, and I'll never forget the fat guy saying this, he said, the paralysis of analysis. He used to say that all the yeah. time. Don't get caught up in the paralysis of analysis because as you're trying to analyze all this stuff, you're paralyzed and you're missing the moment. And you could just, you could be living in the spirit of that moment and all of that, just doing what you can, taking you a step. I saw <laughs> that. Remind, I saw a comment. Um, something happened, and apparently, all of these people at a, a concert were. Like they somehow like they said they lost their memory. They didn't have any rec- recollection of the concert. But then you go you go in the comments and people were like, well, yeah, because you guys spend all of your time making sure you're recording it on your phone <laughs> instead of just living in the moment. But I mean, uh, like that, how many times do we 
grab our phone to try to record something mm -hmm. or take instead a picture of there. instead of just literally being there and living in the moment. Um, Man, there's Kathy so much Murray's more. already looking forward to your sermon on Sunday. She's already in the future. Who is which one? Kathy Murray. She's waiting, looking forward to your message on I'm Sunday. I'm stoked about. Sunday. He won't tell us a thing about it. Nah. That's what he does. He Daniel won't. and the Lions. In that's all you need Woo. to know. And never mind. All right. So uh, bringing this to to a, another point. Whether you see it or not, God is constantly at work moving and positioning you where you need to be. And when you step into that appointed place that God wants you to be, when he wants you to be there, that is the time when miracles start to happen. And I made the point that the, it may not always look like what you want, but that's when the miraculous starts to take place. Joseph went through all that he went through, but he ended up in the number two spot so he could save his family, the nation, and nations after that. Uh, Elijah went to Mount Carmel and he turned the nation back to God. It didn't look like what he wanted it to look like, but because he was where he was supposed to be. When he was on the top of Mount Carmel praying for fire, that was where he was supposed to be, and God sent fire and revived the nation. So, I mean, literally Jesus, the Messiah, the whole purpose of everything. And on they the cross. expected him to be something completely different. Mm -hmm. The literal Messiah was not what they expected. Their whole plan thought he was going to be a militant ruler that would come in and strike everyone down or whatever. Nope, he's going to come and die a humiliating death Amen. on a cross, surrounded by criminals, uh, you know, and be raised again I'm on seeing, the third day. I'm seeing people preaching the comments They're going. Uh, the transcendent one, so I've got to say it because I keep looking at it. The transcendent, it made me think of... The what? Because transcendent, our transcendent God, outside of everything created. I, I love the, the thing that I've heard and uh, how mind-blowing it is that uh, as you're praying to God, whenever you do it, he's outside of time and yep. just the... You're, it's so mind-blowing because it's like as you're talking to him, your grandma's talking to him. Mm -hmm. Her grandma's talking to him. Abraham in the Bible's talking to him. He's outside of time. He sees all of those things mm -hmm. at once. Even though they've already happened for us, it can literally, he can still be in that in moment because beginning. he's outside of time. One of the, and I don't know, I, I'm not saying I subscribe to this uh, theory, but one of the craziest things I've heard is when Moses is on the mountain uh, and he meets with Jesus mm -hmm. and Elijah. Mm -hmm. They, I've heard it said that some people actually believe that um, that was all happening at the same time. It was, it was one of those. Out, it was kind of like an outside of time moment where Jesus was doing all of that at once. Mm -hmm. Like it was happening here for them, and it was happening here for them, and it was happening here for them. I don't, you know, I'm not saying I buy that, but God is outside of time, and you know, not saying that can't happen, but it's just. We're, we're never going to truly know just how crazy glorious everything Ooh. he is until we get there. And then it's like, it, it, there's nothing, you can't yeah. even describe it. I'm excited about it. There's a lot of preaching going on. I'm going to go back home and I read these it. comments. Um, this is what we need. We've got to preach so well that we make preachers. Dang, put that on a shirt. Kelsey, put that on a shirt. Preach so well That's why that I you make preachers. Talking yeah. to everybody, they need to start talking back during the message. Help, yeah. help us preach the message. That was literally something Jake had said. He's like, I've preached to y'all so long now, I, am, I have made preachers. because they'll. Start, he's like, I don't even have to get to my points. They're already making it for me. Preaching is a dialogue, not a monologue. I love it. It's so much better when it is the back and forth. Like, Landing uh, the plane. Uh, I'm at a season of my life right now where I want to be right where God wants me to be, no matter what that is, no matter where that is. And that's, that can be a blessing. That can also be a, a, a fearsome thing. I want to be right where God wants me to be in this season of my life. And right now, sitting here on this couch, I feel like that, that I truly am right where God wants me to be when he wants me to be there. And, and I just want to glorify him in however way that I can and how many more years I've got. I just want to do that. And if we can plant that seed in you guys and you guys can share that, then we'll see fire. Yeah, Revival said, is coming. You said it in your post this coming. afternoon. And I think we're real close. Just, Come I don't on. know, there's a, there's a, there's something in me. There's, we are like right there at the Knock threshold. On it. Yeah. I, well, I, in some ways you can see it. I mean, we're seeing healings, divine yeah. healings. I mean, I mean with this, all the testimonies to. in the chat tonight, and then, I mean, just the opposition that has been coming, Amen. the devil trying to kill us as we were driving today, uh, just there's there's something coming. But mm -hmm. that, that you had said something in uh, your altar call 
And it was along those lines of, you know, being where God wants you to be and praying for that, praying for God to use you how he wants to use you, praying for his will to get done. And you said something, you know, like not a lot of people pray that type of prayer, Mm -hmm. which is true. And I had said it to um, the music team. It's just because that's such a dangerous prayer. Yes. God, use me. Use me in the way that you want me to use me. That's why people won't pray it Mm -hmm. because (laughs) we don't know what that means. We don't know what it's going to look like. The man that you posted this afternoon, he said, I wanted to be an attorney. Yeah. I had zero intention of doing this. I was a deputy. I was happy with wearing a badge and a gun the rest of my life. That's what I wanted to do since I was 12. And God just pulls you right out of it. Climbing poles and working with electricity. (laughs) You have to put the first one so people are like, what? (laughs) Kelsey was a nurse. Our whole plan was, uh, you know, work through that. And then once the kids moved out, we were going to do traveling and just live and and go around. No, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. Come on. I, I can tell you that much. I've had, actually, I've had conversations with people I haven't talked to in quite some time, uh, and one was actually a guy we had met on our honeymoon or something on a cruise. And wow. I've kept up with him a little bit. I haven't talked to him in like a year. And I just randomly messaged him the other day. He's like, man, I saw your preaching. That's awesome. Like he's, it was cool. It was just, there's people that I didn't even know were paying attention. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's watching tonight. Dale was watching live during my sermon the other week. Yeah. Uh, Tickled about that. So, I mean, that's just, there's stuff moving. There's stuff Amen. moving. Something's changing. I, I cannot wait. So to don't see lose it. heart, and don't believe the, any lie that the devil puts in you that you know things are. It's not going to work, and it's not going to happen. God is at work. Good things are happening. Powerful things are happening. I've never been more excited than I am right now. It just today it kind of just stirred up in me, and then when I got the news that I got, I was like, all right, here we go. So with that being said, I'm, I'm out of gas tonight. I'm ready to go home and see my oh, man, we can, pretty we can wife. Keep going yeah, we could talk for another hour. I'm starving, though. But You're uh, still not going to tell us about uh, the sermon, just Daniel nope. in the lion's den. Daniel in the lion's den. Let's go. Y'all locked be in the church in. on Sunday. Locked, I don't know what I'm... I locked in with the lions, apparently, was what lions. I was about to say. So What's I guess, your lion? I don't even have the title yet. Did you read... I shared it last night. Did you read any comments I on did. It? Uh, a lot of good the, comments. Those were good. I was actually glad to like, see wow. a lot of people um, engaging. I think Amen. that's um, it's important. Exciting. I think it's important for people It's to exciting. Do that. Everything's stirring right now. The music, the people. The, uh, it's the, good. If you're not here, you're missing out. I mean, we'll And just, that's another point we'll of it. You know, I heard somebody say the other day, well, people are never going to go back to church. Uh, you know, watching online is great. Obviously, we've got you guys here on Wednesday night. Happy to have that. But... Um, If you're in town and you're local and you can make it, there's nothing like being in the building. Everybody can testify and say that. There's nothing like that feeling of just being around people. Especially with what's going on here lately. Um, You can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence, exactly. The presence of God during worship and the words that have... uh, It sounds weird because I feel like it's almost prideful, but I think we've had at least the last two weeks have been really good... Bring it on them. Just, you can... There's. It's like stepping up to another notch. I mean, I said it Sunday... Not that you've been doing a bad job or anything, but that was like a whole different... It was like, I wasn't there when you first started. So to me, I don't know if that was like a reigniting of the passion (laughs) when you first began or if it's just a new fire, but um, I'm here for it. I've got my own getting lit up. It's it's going to be a really fun ride. Yes, it is. Get on board. We will see. (laughs) That was the weirdest ending. We'll see you guys next week. Um... Stay classy, San Diego. I'm Ron. Hey, come ready to uh, donate blood Sunday if you're a oh, blood yeah. donor. I'm that guy. I'm going to be in line because it's my time. It's time for me to do that. Uh, a lot oh. of cool things are going on. Don't forget Saturday. Is it Saturday night? The uh, kids back to school bash. I think yeah. Yeah, they're looking forward to that. If you have children, check it out. Look on our website. It's all free. August tenth, four to seven. It's going to be really fun for the kids and it's fun good. for the parents. The parents can go hang out. Exactly. So with that, come early Sunday. You don't want to miss it. I'm telling you. Going to be real. I'm speaking it now. It's, it's, it's going to be good. I'm excited. It is. I'm excited. Let's go. We'll see you. Come early. 10 a.m. Get here at 925. Come on. See you guys Sunday. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. 
Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.